Hey there, rulers, DMO73 here, bringing you a feature match between Garrett Edwards and his Raya Mysteries list, starting as Raya, versus Paul Reisman and his most recent take on Veer Melody. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to pre order upcoming Force of Will sets, CCGPrimes.com for singles and supplies, Cardodoco.com for those rulers in the international market looking for product, the Ruler School Circuit Series, now offering our quarter two 2024 circuit kits, and our guest lecturer members fight ramen class is in session so as we get started here garrett on the left is playing a starting as raya mysteries list and just for fun here he's just like hey look at my opening hand it's nothing but mikage raya this is prior to mulligans so we're going to be shipping some of that away uh paul is playing a veer melody combo list utilizing the new stage from uh, judgment of the rogue planet uh, which is really really awesome to be able to improve the consistency of the deck to be able to search for other miss uh melody chants and also generate those tokens so you don't have to rely purely on contract to be able to apply pressure so let's see how this goes as we go into game one good to be back doing some commentary here finally not feeling as sick we see an end of turn coin out to play cascade for paul just to be able to protect a little bit here after a pass from garrett uh, and then we're going to go ahead and move into the main phase interesting choice to burn coin there i do see though that cascade kind of probably comes down early for veer especially seeing that we're going to generate lots of tokens that we don't really have a way to sack so it's going to be hard to make that card cheap age of rain coming down here which is nice sets it up so that all of our uh chants in the deck are music and then we get amy kage Rea at end of turn for garrett it's going to dump a garion probably going to see potential reanimate with part of true power here on this Garion, and if we do if paul can't answer it that's immediately going to be bad for paul uh the deck i imagine is primarily one drops outside of something like uh cascade and so if that Garion resolves it's going to be very hard for paul to do anything about it that being said, Paul does have some interesting things that he could do kind of in response to a part of True Power. He could use the Cascade um, to be able to protect it. Uh, we could also see something like uh, Loki enters the Game of Gods to get Melody 1 and then use the will from that to cast a Reign of Snakes or Reign of Serpents, which could then use its bounce ability on the Gary and put it back in hand so it doesn't become a problem anymore. There's, there are outs to it. It's just if it resolves, it's going to be a problem for Paul for sure. Seeing that the Cascade is there, I don't imagine we see part of True Power come in right away. It would just get immediately answered by the Cascade. So we're just going to swing in for Garrett for 400, take Paul down to 36, go up to 44. Both decks have access to Drain because of the fact that uh, cast, um, Contract for VR does have Drain on it when you have multiple uh, Melody. Uh, so that's interestingly enough. We see Aspiring Diva come down here for Paul. It's going to help to dig through hopefully digs us into a chant so we can get access to some melody this turn and maybe start setting up um the uh, addition paul goes for a second aspiring diva potentially yeah just digging a little bit that uh, further does see a loki enters the game of gods which is really nice um here if we could get access to the addition we'd be in really good spot a really good spot here even outside of the um part of true power just because of the searching ability but unless we're not choosing to go in here maybe feeling a little bit comfortable enough with just the will that we have and the cascade down comes the part of true power banishing the raya as cost we are going to see the cascade attempt to stop it down comes the lore right here does paul try to play to the outs of trying to dig to get the gary and answered does look like maybe we don't have it and so just scoops it up at that point in time and says yeah that gary is going to answer it we go into game two like i said gary and if we can't answer it the whole deck is pretty much one drops outside of cascade it's going to be really hard for paul to come back from that and so he says let's just move on we'll scoop it up and we'll go into game two Something like setting the stage of Providence would be really good um, to be able to protect there. You see it's an opener now, so I imagine we probably will see Paul having a little bit more protected uh, opener next time around. We're going to see Dark Knight Butterfly come down here using the mystery counters that the uh, extension rule gives us, which is really nice. Does hit two cards out of Paul's hand right there for one will. And then at end of turn, because we burn some mystery counters, Garrett is going to get to draw some cards, which is really, really nice. 
getting to start the game with more mystery counters than you normally would, as well as being able to just generate value by making them is or by using them is really, really good for Raya. Age of Rain comes down here. We're going to pop coin for Aspiring Diva. It's going to dig us a little bit deeper. We see a fairer spell, which I think is a good choice. Then we're going to see a pass. Generating those additional mystery counters. I think we missed that that's there. They'll catch it here in a minute. Might be helpful based on what Garrett's going to try to play here. Does see a second Dark Knight Butterfly here to really rip Paul's hands to shreds. Now for Paul, that's not a huge deal. The deck can draw a bajillion cards as well as if he does get access to additions. Suddenly having those um, melodies in the graveyard is pretty good for being able to set up and go search for other ones. So that's not a terrible kind of piece there. It can refill its hand quite easily. Down comes Dracula Reborn Vampire as for some aggression and then we pass turn, leaving Paul with a pretty safe ton of turn to go off as he wants here too. So Aspiring Diva gets us to dig a little bit here. Hopefully seeing Sonic Siren, which is a nice little turn on spell to be able to get Melody moving. Keeping in mind with Melody, uh, Age of Rain, every single chance is also Melody. There's also music. Ultimately just a pass though from Paul interesting really setting up a pretty huge kind of push turn doesn't maybe feel like he has the things that he needs right yet maybe just missing the addition before we really commit hard to the chant kind of cycle off the storm imagine we're going to see this dracula swing in down comes a gil lapis it's not going to be able to do any stat nags, but it does it set up for a graveyard to be able to kind of buy something back off a part of true power. We see two more Draculas uh, and another Mikage Rea, ultimately choosing not to buy back any of the cards there with Gilapis. Although you would have to, as there is one there, so that's a little bit of a misplay. Keep in mind, it doesn't say then you may put a resonator from your graveyard into your hand. It says put a resonator from a graveyard into your hand. Swing it in for four. Paul says that's fine. Goes down to 36. Before draw on Paul's turn, we're going to see an Einsatz here. Setting up gets us to Melody 1. Let's us 4C2. Because it's our first chance of the turn, it is free. It's the spell you really want to see for Veer in your hands to kind of start the train going does set us up for a recovery and immediately being able to call stone with snake and then using the ear for the addition second age of rain comes down here just to draw another card and we did finally find our way into song of eternal serenity so now paul's in a very good spot paul has four will and the ability to kind of really go off here uh, we're also at three stones so this is also contract turn paul could probably find the lethal line here if we get to it so loki enters the game of gods we should have a 4-4 token um it's gonna get to cycle and make us some additional will aspiring diva now we have another floating will using the aspiring diva for sonic siren to recover a stone that gets us another token so we should have two 4-4 tokens kind of just tracking how many tokens they would have like i said just Paul still has a floating wheel and still has God Art available, which is kind of insane. Get to use Sonic Siren and RFG it. Going to try and search for a chant here. We're going to see Lorite come down. This is probably where we're going to see that setting the stage of Providence here. Oh, we're just going to go. We're going to let the stop search happen. Go for Summon the Serpent, which will be Melody 4. So we get to draw 4, put 2 back, and move into Contracts. It's an interesting choice. We know I'm pretty sure we saw setting the stage of Providence in Opener, so unless it got discarded, couldn't see it because of the overlay, that's quite possible. Gleetnir is going to get to steal, probably going to steal the Dracula. Yeah, that makes the most sense to me as well. Stops that recursion as well as serves as a flying blocker potentially. Right now, the Gleepnir is pretty safe to just be able to swing in and do quite a chunk of damage. We see a memory, a Melody of Rain. It's going to put both of those back on the bottom of the deck. Gets to make us another counter. 
Now we're swinging in for a ton of damage along with the drain for a pretty safe turn here going down to 500 and up to 7100 and pretty much saying please answer this board of Dracula plus five bodies plus the Gleepnir who's going to get the combo off again next turn and generate even more value or lose. Uh, so this is a pretty bad spot for uh, Garrett to be in here. Um, there's not going to be a ton that's going to be able to be happening in this outside of like a final battle. But again, that's not going to help you here. Um, we do see that there's a reincarnation in hand, but that doesn't really help even if we do judgment because that's going to just leave uh, one blocker that can't possibly kill the melody of uh, the Gleepnir. So it can tap to kill one of the tokens, but it would have to block the rest. Or it wouldn't be able to block any of the rest of them, and it can't kill the J Ruler. So, like, it's just not a good spot for um, Garrett to be into. Now, the Rhea will have Drain uh, and is a 1700 attack uh, if we do reincarnate, which it does look like we're going into. And it does look like the other card in hand that was uh, discarded or milled was the uh, Inherit the Stars Life Zapper. The problem is we're out of will. This is the biggest problem. So even something like um, this would be not a pretty decent spot to be going into and to liberate the blood um, or darkness blood, but we don't have any will to be able to cast it. So that's a real rough spot here. Um, we do have the ability to tap and remove a mystery counter to be able to draw something, but we can't even do God's Art right now because uh, it costs one black. Um so right now we're sitting at a maximum of 2200 life uh and even with what's represented on board if we block the tokens or if we block the dracula the other things on board are presenting lethal damage um so you'd have to block but even if you block the gleepnir the other things on board are representing 24 damage so unfortunately regardless of what garrett grabs here this is going to be the game for game two it's just a matter of paul playing it out um and hopefully Paul just realizes that all he has to do is just move to recovery and swing. Um, but we'll see, especially considering the Dracula is also bigger because of the two Melody of Reigns or the two Age of Reigns. Uh, and so, like, there, there's nothing Garrett can do here um, that can stop him from getting the damage outside of having a couple cards in the RFG to be able to do Liberate the Darkness. Um, but I don't think we've seen that in the list so far. And right now, Garrett doesn't have a way to get any cards into that face down pile or into that RFG pile at all anyway. There is a world where something if we were playing like um, Curse of Dark Feather or Blessing of Dark Feather to RFG a couple cards uh, to get rid of the last cards in Paul's hand, whether or not he has them or not, and then be able to go in to liberate the darkness. But even then, I just it doesn't do enough simply because of how many um, things there are on board that present lethal. It'd have to be tap. Uh, it'd have to be block one of the, t the um, like, in Paul's scenario, he just has to attack with the tokens first. That's like the way to win here um, because you either have to block the tokens and take the most of the damage from everything else or um, you have to let the tokens happen and kill you, which is rough. So um, goes in for four. We're not tracking the life total here because it's just a matter of watching it play out. Just moving straight into it. We do see Loki enters the game of gods, which procs and generates us some will for... Um, being able to do making Gleepnir even bigger. Uh, we see a Sonic Siren to recover a stone. This now generates another, another token, but it doesn't really matter. This is just, I guess, Paul styling a little bit. We'll see. Maybe he's curious to what might be the play in the hand. Um, but right now, because there's no cards in RFG for Garrett, there is truly nothing that Garrett will be able to do to stop this uh, from finding the lethal line, even with the drain from uh, Rhea being able to block something, especially because the first token already got, went through. So technically Garrett would be at 100 life. If you swing with the second token, it either has to get blocked, which puts Garrett at 1800 life and then Dracula and all the other tokens kill you, or you block, you'd be able to block with the, um, <sighs> Block with the Rhea, gain up to 18, use Liberate the Darkness to kill the Gleepnir and the Rhea, um, and then 
still take the other 2,800 damage from the other tokens in Dracula. Like, there's just no line here that gets you out. Going for a Dissonance of Ring here, probably just calling two for a non-resonator chance, just to say, even better, I just do not want to deal with Liberate the Darkness, which makes a lot of sense to me. All just generating a million counters goes in for a setting the stage of providence just generates another token um you can really see just how much this deck really can just storm off with these one cost kind of cycles and will production and recover a stone and cycling off the search a third age of rain here another uh <laughs> um of the addition to keep going even border this is the epitome of like stop stop he's already dead but paul's just going to show you exactly how far this deck can go when uninterrupted and how much pressure it can generate like i said before um the addition is huge for veer to just be able to also make all these tokens and say like cool i don't just threaten you with veer now i also make this army that you have to answer uh and if you can't you just die um which is kind of insane Goes in with the track, blocks, generates some additional life because of the drain. And then at that point in time, through the tokens and the VR, it's just lethal. Uh, it just kind of walks it through at that point in time now that we've gotten the block committed to. And VR swings in, Gleekner swings in to find the lethal line there. We take it to game three. So going into game three here, I imagine Garrett's probably going to take the coin yep there we go um just to kind of set paul off of not being able to go so will positive especially since uh paul already gets to start with uh snake's will and if we get age of rain night off the top um which there it is suddenly uh the snake will can be used for lots of different things um which is kind of insane a call stone and then a pass setting up for probably something like uh araya into trying to do the line as we saw before there's a world where like if paul taps out too much we see something like araya into part of true power with some protection um do see aspiring diva get lore righted to try to uh, stop the dig a second aspiring diva comes down and does get us the um uh Setting the stage of Providence, we do see the Garion get pitched here. Um, at the end of turn, we have the setting the stage of Providence, though, to be able to protect it. Um, there's a world here where if we have Cascade, you just wait until the uh, part of True Power gets cast. Um, because Garrett's only going to be at two will, and then you just kind of like banish both Divas. Part of True Power is going to try to come down here, sacrifice the Reyes, going to try to reanimate that Garion. There's a lot of space here for Paul to be able to make something happen. We see a Sonic Siren's going to recover the stone. Second Diva gets cast here, gets banished here to produce some extra will, setting the stage of Providence off of the second Diva. We're up to two. Reign of Serpents here to get us... Uh, two kind of procs of plus four plus four it's going to do another plus four another reign of serpents off of that one which has two procs um still has access to the available the will from um little snake if we want to as well um this is a good spot for paul because paul can just put the garion back in hand like we said before Swings in for 15. Interesting choice here to have the Reign of Serpents. The Reign of that Reign of Serpents technically wouldn't have been able to bounce anything. We would have had to use the other one, because again, the Reign of Serpents ability is only once per turn. We would have had two 4-4 four, four Reign of Serpents here, but that's probably fine. Uh, we'd also be able to put us some nice pressure, like draw for turn, recover, uh, swing with both snakes. If one blocks the Rhea, you swing with the other one, and then once they've already done their work, then you sacrifice them. So just keep that in mind that Reign of Serpents does in fact say once per turn. Um, so we would have had to have two 4-4 four, four snakes instead of an 8-8 eight, eight snake. That's now a 4-4 four, four snake. Einsatz coming down here, getting to 4-C. Setting ourselves up for next turn. 
if we can get the addition there's a world where you just kind of start to try to go off here a little bit the problem is we do have another part of true power in graveyard although the garion is in hand so it might be a little bit trickier to set that up for a part of true power before we do have another raya so a full tap out with no will production does mean that we see a raya discard the garion from deck and then immediately go in and pump uh try to do part of true power again but again you're sitting on reign of serpents right so you're just like well, okay waste your whole turn doing that that's fine I'll just bounce it back to your hand, that Garion back to your hand, and then we brought off to the races. Do you see a Summon the Serpent of Rain here for only Melody 2? We are at turn 3, so I imagine we do see this get flipped. Gets us to draw a couple cards and we have to put two back. We are going to contract. Gleitner's going to steal the Lorite. Does free up a uh, Rain of Serpents to be able to attack in for 400, get some damage. going to use Gleipnir to cast our addition because it is J slash roller with melody get to go searching what are we searching for Again, keep in mind that because we have Age of Rain, this lets us search for any chant we want. Um, because they're all musics, <laughs> uh, which is a little bit nuts. It does set up for things like being able to search for setting the stage of Providence, being able to search for um, Fairer Spell, being able to search for Loki enters the game of gods, ultimately choosing to grab last melody or last movement. Uh, with the new CR update, last movement is also just another free melody spell um, because you can just cast it for X equals zero by removing no cards from your hand, um, which is kind of nice if you want to just bump your melody cost up one. Does search for the Loki enters the game of gods here, which makes a lot of sense as well. Again, it's all about cycling in this deck. Um, I don't imagine we see this go off this turn necessarily, but does actually look like we're just going to go ahead and burn the Loki enters the game of gods right now, which is an interesting choice. Using our last stone for a reign of serpents. So establishing some pretty good damage here on board. Um, to be able to set up for next turn, we do have some double will production. We've got the ability to bounce something. We can refill our hand and draw some cards. Like, we're not searching at all, so it's kind of stuck with whatever we have in hand. But we'll see if that kind of how that plays into what Garrett's going to do here, especially since we're going to be calling stone and there's no way for us to do judgment this turn. Does put Paul in an interesting position to be able to do some pressure here next turn. If we see a pass, there's a world where Paul just like calls stone, swings in with Reign of Serpents. I, I don't know. I don't really think you need to go in with Gleipnir right away. Like you just kind of, I, th I feel like you just sit on a potential turn of like being able to leave all your will open, go off during recovery, move to recovery, go off again, and then find your lethal, like a two turn clock, especially since the Reign of Serpents can just like swing and then generate you value. Um, cause right now representing, uh, 20 damage on board, just with the reign of serpents and the plus one player and the token, uh, plus the lorite. So that's like 25, um, which Garrett has to be able to answer. It's a two turn clock or you're die. Really curious what we're going to see come into play here. Looking at the stat lines, looking at the board presence, looking at what's in hand, how the Reign of Serpents are contributing to the board state, what resources Paul still has. It's deceptive, right? Paul looks like he's tapped out, but in reality, Paul's sitting on potentially two will or a will and draw card, which is potentially more tokens. There's a lot of stuff here. Do you see a hard cast of a Persephone targeting the Gleepinir? I don't know if I agree with this line. It gets the Gleipnir off the board, uh, but it does set Paul up to be able to uh, put another addition onto the field next turn. Uh, does buy the Lorite back, so I suppose in that way that makes sense. 
um, does set up for being able to uh, generate uh, another edition and then go into contract. So like two potential searches where one of them at the end of it gets you contract. Um, because that's a world we live in here, especially with last movement being in hand. Like Paul, if Paul has a setting the stage in hand, if Paul has access to Dissonance of Rain, there's a very real likelihood that Paul just finds lethal this turn, um, which is a little bit kind of nuts. Choosing not to swing in first, which I think is incorrect. Uh, you might as well always try to get that damage. If it goes to get a block, then like you just remove it anyway, and then you kind of aid at a blocker, sort of double duty, but um, chooses to just use that first, I guess, a draw a card. I'm gonna go right into a search. Gets us another Einsatz. Einsatz is going to go ahead and use free mode to get Melody 1. Trying to see if we're going to bait out a spell from Garrett here. I imagine there's either a Garion in hand or another Lorite. But if we can play through one point of interaction. Especially since we're now able to search for setting the stage of Providence. Which is kind of huge. Um, if we have another token. If we have another addition. Then the world is like wait until Garrett tries to pop uh some form of interaction for our chant search for dissonant um setting the stage of providence using the addition and then get the next addition into play and then use that to search for contract and then kind of cycle 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 and then just go from there uh, we do see a summon the serpent of rain come down here Down comes that Gary and this is what I'm talking about in terms of using the addition to search for setting the stage of Providence um, because at resolution, you know, you draw three cards and put two back and kind of cycle. Ultimately, though, Paul says, that's fine. I'm going to let it resolve, which is interesting. Makes me think he either has a second one in hand or place plans to just go off. Um, we see another token get generated because it does technically get cast. Got to go search for another thing. And this is where the nice little sequence happens. So you... Uh, RFG is cost and then hold priority, uh, use it to solarize, use the card you want to search for solarization for Cascade, and then get to go search for the card that you just tucked back because it's RFG is cost and so uh, the addition only cares what cards are in your RFG at res remove, uh, resolution. So you can kind of use Cascade as a way to recycle the same chant a couple of times, which is pretty cool. Um, so Cascade gets to come down here, serves us a little bit for more protection, although we're playing into a tapped board. Um, Paul gets to contract here. It's going to take the Persephone, I imagine. It's generating additional tokens. Um, lots of good value happening here. Lots of pressure setting up for a next turn lethal line. <coughs> also getting to draw us three cards, which is great. It's not going to... or Sorry, two cards. It's not increasing our melody count at all. But it does mean that if, you know, Paul has cards in his hand that don't help him continue the melody chain, he can just tuck those back into the deck and draw, have summon the serpent be the cards that drew him into the melody chain, which is really nice. Deciding what he wants to tuck back here, probably because he's trying to do math on exactly how much damage he'll be able to do. Takes the Persephone with Gleepnir. Has to get at least a few more melody if he wants to get that swiftness. Uses our God's Art from Snake to generate some extra will. Snake gets us to draw a card. Again, I don't see a reason why we didn't swing with Snake first. Um, using Gleepnir for, like, that's what I mean. The sequencing here, I feel like, could have gotten us to something a little bit better. Um, we're still putting out so much pressure here that, like, next turn is probably lethal regardless, but there does seem to be a world where it feels like we could have drawn into something, or we could have cycled this in such a way that we would be able to use Veer herself to play this extra edition instead of having to use Gleepnir so that Gleepnir would be able to swing. But 10,000 foot view from the streaming box, who, who are you going to uh, kind of hold to account? So finally gets to swing in for eight. Garrett says, that's fine, I'll take it. Go down to 32. Bunch of tokens on board. They all got generated this turn. None of them are going to be able to attack. We just pass the turn there.
So there are currently six bodies on board for Paul. Um, this is a lot for the darkness deck to be able to answer if it's not able to generate those tokens uh, through things like Life Zapper. Playing three, we're seeing a mystery turn of a Dark Moon Harvest. Dark Blades Harvest. This is going to try to kill the Persephone and it will deal a thousand damage to Paul because it's being buffed up by Age of Rain. I don't think Paul cares. Um, and that costs three will for uh, Garrett, which does not answer the most powerful things on the board. Sure, the thousand from Persephone is a lot, um, but you still have to deal with the fact that Gleipnir is going to make a million tokens next turn. It's going to get bigger every single time Paul goes off and Garrett's now sitting at just one uh will and all the time that paul's going to want to try to go off is going to be during the main phase which means that cascade's going to work really 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 well uh, to be able to protect from things like fair spell um outside of like garion and lorite we, if we're in for a bad time and the turn we get to draw a card because we burn some mystery counters before recovery we see loki's insight Garion's going to come down and eat it. That's fine, though. It still generates the melody because it's technically a music. So we don't care. Still before recovery, we're going to do a melody of rain to put the Lorite back in hand. Just clear the board here. That should generate a second token. We should be at melody two. Not that that token would be able to attack, but it does count as a pump up for Gleepnir. And this is just going to be the lethal carry out here. So four, eight... 12 20 leaving uh garrett with two of melody here all we need to do is search for a music chant at this point in time we can do last movement that'll put us at three um just put us to three pumps and swing in for gleep near for lethal even then don't really need it um just going to find our lethal line and that will be the game so there you guys have it hope you guys enjoyed this little play out gonna be back and commentating for you again the beard list will be up later this week from paul but until next time this is dmo73 saying class dismissed